So it wouldn't be chemistry without some proper measurements and calculations, as they are critical, as it says there, to the scientific world. So we're going to take a look at some stuff that should be review, and then some new stuff as well. But let's start here with the difference between a quantitative and qualitative observation. We did this earlier in the year when we did our very first lab, but a qualitative observation is descriptive, non-numeric. A quantitative observation, that's a measurement. It's got a number with it. So like temperature or getting the mass of a, something off of the scale. Now you don't have to write those examples down because of course you know that already, but definitely want to know the difference between qualitative and quantitative observation. Next up we're going to look at sorry, the difference between accuracy and precision. It's kind of like we talked earlier in the year, that there is a difference between mass and weight. Sure, you know, people interchange those words all the time, but we want to make sure we know the actual difference between those two. Just the same with accuracy and precision. Accuracy, as you see there, is how close a single measurement or, or task comes to the real, true, actual value of what's going on. So here we see an example. If your goal, if someone hands you a dart and your goal is to hit that bullseye and you do, then you are accurate. If you do not hit the bullseye, you are inaccurate. If you hit close to the bullseye, then you're slightly inaccurate. So you can kind of measure your inaccuracy. If your dart goes way over to the right somewhere and hits your friend in the head, then you're way more inaccurate. Sometimes, like next week in the lab, we're going, you're going to get a piece of metal and you're going to have to measure its density or calculate its density and specific heat. There are true real values for the densities and specific heats of metals. So there is a right answer. And so we'll be able to check your accuracy by seeing how close you are to that and then give like a percent error to kind of judge our accuracy. Precision, on the other hand, is looking at kind of like a skill set how close several measurements are to the same value. Or going back to our dartboard analogy, if someone gives you 10 darts and each time you would hit the bullseye, you would be accurate. Repeating that 10 times, that's going to show precision. On, at the same time, over here on this dartboard, you see if you throw all those darts and you miss the target, but you do so in the same repeated pattern, you are displaying precision. It says here, you can be precise without being accurate. So in the lab, you know, in the perfect world, we would have more time for labs. And if you would get a result, the first thing I would tell you to do is do it again and repeat your results. That's how science has been built over the years, repeating results and confirming results. You could do something wrong and get the same repeated answer several times, you would be displaying precision, but you could still not be accurate. And we'll look at that again, like I said, when we do a, a few more labs here in the near future. Our next little review thing, scientific notation. Um, you know, in science and chemistry, we have some really, really small numbers, like one gold atom being 0.0000327 grams, and that can be cumbersome. Someone, somewhere along the line, said, hey, you know what, I'm tired of writing all these zeros. So they said, hey, come up with something better. So that's what this is. They decided, hey, I'm going to move the decimal all the way over till it's between two numbers. So I would write that, and then I'm going to tell people how many places I moved that, the decimal over. So here it's 22 places. You got to remember when you go to the right, when the number is less than one, then it would be a negative exponent. We can also have really large numbers like with the mole. And so again, one gram of hydrogen, its molar mass has that many atoms. Much easier to write 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, saying that we move that decimal 23 places to the left. Now with scientific notation in our calculations, we really want to try to be using the EE or EXP key 
on our calendar, uh, calendar, sorry, calculator. If you're using times 10 to the, or y to the x, or the caret, you just run the risk of getting your calculator out of the order of operations and getting poor answers. So like on the graphing calculator, if I wanted to type this number in, I would type 7.35, I would hit the second button, and then I would hit the comma, because above the comma is the EE symbol. And then I would just type in the 9. When I do this calculation, then my calculator, especially graphing calculator, would say 1.6E10. And you can write it like that, or you can write times 10 to the 10th. So try and do these calculations on your calculator just to brush, freshen up your calculator skills. If you're not getting these answers, please, please, please come check with me and I'll help you do that. Our last little thing that will lead us to sig figs is we have a fundamental conclusion about measuring. And you see it there. A measurement can be no more reliable than the instrument being used. Even this little guy here, our digital scale. As humans, we tend to believe something that's digital, like, oh, it has to be right, it's digital. You know, when I set up the lab, and if we've got seven digital scales in the lab, and you put the same object on all those scales, you're going to get different numbers, different measurements each time. They'll be very close, hopefully, but there is definitely error in all of our measurements. And so that's why when we calculate in chemistry, we have to account for those errors in our numbers. Last thing of note here, because I know it's on your midterm exam, but even our glassware has error in it. If I asked you to bring me 20 milliliters of a substance, you're probably not going to choose a beaker. All right, you can see beakers have way less markings on them. So that would be like a huge estimate. Plus, on the beaker itself, it usually says like plus or minus 10% error. That's a lot. I would probably choose something more like the graduated cylinder. Many more markings on it. In fact, it probably has a line for 20, so you could fill it up to 20 milliliters. And that would be much better. Coming up here soon, we're going to do some acid and base titrations using what's called a burette. And that's even a better piece of glassware when we're talking about measuring liquids. But again, all of this is leading up to this discussion on sig figs. That's what we'll be checking out next. And then from there, we'll be doing some calculations with that. So see you then.